to do the introduction. Okay, welcome to the ELD MOOC. Welcome to this year's MOOC on options and pathways for stakeholder engagement. I'm happy to be with you here this afternoon. I am Claudia Musekamp and I am the online tutor for this MOOC. Um, along with me, um, Ali Salah will be an online tutor and you will have the opportunity to meet him either later today or uh, in another session. Uh, in the last MOOC, we worked with numbers a lot. We did a cost-benefit analysis um, of uh, ecosystem services and uh, options um, of improving um, the situation of the land. This year, we'll be looking at people, at um, stakeholders, and this opportunity will guide you through a process of establishing stakeholder engagement in the um, land or in the, the process of reversing or uh, preventing uh, land degradation. Um, before I'll introduce you to Mark Schauer and our other speakers, I would uh, like to know a little bit about your own background, uh, particularly your experience in MOOC. Uh, I've prepared uh, a question for you. And the question is, have you ever taken part in the MOOC uh, like this one? Did, um, please click. Uh, is, did you take part in last year's MOOC in the ELD? MOOC 2014, or did you take part in another MOOC? A lot of universities offer MOOCs nowadays. Or do you say, I'm new? So click on the option which is closest to you. I see responses coming in. So I guess the, you see the results. Uh, it's pretty clear. Most of you are new to the MOOC, so we are very happy to have you. And uh, we are glad to be working with you and getting your experience in fighting land degradation. And uh, we'll be delighted if you share your experiences and give us feedback on uh, what is important to you and um, about your experience in the MOOC. Okay, so we'll get back to the presentation. Mm. Up. Um, us... Takes a moment. Okay, here comes the presentation, and now I have the pleasure to introduce Mark Schauer to you. Hello, Mark, everyone. Mark Schauer is the coordinator of the ELD Secretariat in Bonn with the GIZ. Previously, he worked with the United Nations Environment Program, the initiative called TEB and he holds a master's degree in forestry management. And please welcome with me, Mr. Mark Schauer. Hello, everyone. Thanks for the introduction. Yeah, I have a master's in forestry, but I spent my days um, <laughs> at the desk, <laughs> mostly. Exactly. Um, thank you for the introduction, Claudia. Good to have some of you back on board here in the MOOC, in MOOC 2.0. Good to work with Claudia again, good to work with the whole team again. Um, I already said after last year's MOOC, we received a number of positive feedback notes and um, 
decided that it would be worth to set up another round of a massive open online course in the context of the of the ELD initiative, not doing the same what we did last year, though, so it would be still attractive for everybody who's indicated here that they've been with us um, in the last year already. But we want to come up with a bit of a new focus with new content and hope you'll find the content and the discussions arising from this interesting and stimulating for your own work and for your own issues which you're solving either in your um, research environment or within your um, within your, within the sphere of your job or your professional activities there. So welcome again. Thanks for joining us for this first session here. Um, I will start with this little presentation here, which will take probably around 20, 25 minutes or so. Let's see. So I try not to be too long and not boring at all. And after me, we'll have Stacy Noel speaking as well. Stacy is um, participating today from the head office of SEI, Stockholm Environments Institute's um, office in Nairobi. And um, Stacy is also. Um, quick introduction from my side. Claudia will probably elaborate a bit more on Stacy's background. Stacy is also the head of one of ELD's working group. We'll come to that a bit later in my presentation on policy and outreach. And um, this is why we've asked her to come in on board and provide some of her expertise and experience, share some of her exp exp experiences with us. Right, so right into it. Um, I hope you can all see the presentation, and here it comes. You all know, many of you would know what the issue is, what we are facing, because um, the issue of land degradation is not such a public one, so we usually attract people who are at least... Um, a little involved in that issue in their professional work there. But um, so many of you will be aware of the issue that we are losing tons and tons every year of um, fertile farmland. And it's losses of soil, but it's also losses of livelihoods. And it's losses very closely connected to that of food security as well, leading to poverty. We've put some points here, social tension, Reduce, reduced availability of clean water as well, and very important, inclusive vulnerability. We are in the year where everybody expects the um, climate change negotiations to, or hopes that the climate change negotiations will create some breakthrough. And um, I think that this will not be possible without linking climate and soil issues. So. That'll be an interesting um, thing on the international floor to watch to, um, in the end of this year here. But what can we do in this context, ELD? ELD is trying to provide better data for better decision making in the end. And um, in, the, in this course and in the course of the ELD initiative, we want to show how to integrate data into decision making, discuss with you how this can be improved, and um, show some uh, of our work experience, how we are trying to in include data from our work into decision making processes. This very cool graph has been provided by the United Nations University to us. Um, it's the United Nations University based in Toronto. It's Inway. And um, they are providing us with this nice graph, but also with scientific coordination um, from uh, their side. So they are helping us with expertise and um, providing us with some backstopping for our work. Here, I just see that Naomi Stewart has joined us. Naomi is um, part of the scientific coordination team in Toronto. Hey, Naomi. And um, as you can see, um, we are obviously responsible. 
You cannot hear me anymore. Are you all okay? Let me check my audio. Okay. It's, to me, the audio is working fine. Sometimes it's a related an issue related to the internet connection. And we see a number of okays there. Thank you for that feedback. Very helpful. Okay, super. Okay, then I'll just keep. I just keep talking, and um, hope that uh, it all gets through to you guys. Okay, so this graph underlines again that we are responsible for a large part of desertification land degradation, and um, our valuations show that the cost of action to prevent land degradation is actually less than just letting it come along and let, just letting the land degradation happen and live with the costs which come out from this. The economic approach which we are following has been um, suggested by a number of, of our partners. Since many of you have not been with us in the earlier MOOC, let me give a very quick, let, let us step one more step back <clears throat> and go into the history of ELD because ELD was initiated um, by a number of partners, including the German Ministry for Development, um, the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, and the European Commission at that time, because they saw that other international conventions create awareness with economic arguments. This might include um, the report of Lord Stern and his team in the context of the climate change. Some of you might be aware of that. And um, in the context of biodiversity, Claudia has mentioned this, there was a study called TEEB, T -E -E -B. Um, some of the ELD team, including me, have been working in that um, initiative as well. And we tried to provide economic arguments in that context for preserving biodiversity and ecosystem services and created, I think, um, some awareness for the issue through economic arguments because often you reach out to decision makers it's easier to reach out to decision makers through economic arguments than through ethnic or socio, so, um, socio-economic arguments only there so if you focus on the dollar, euro on the shilling or whatever currency you have there um, your local decision makers might be might be more vested into following up on that issue, and um, for us, economics is kind of a language in that case. So we try to transfer um, the the issues we are facing into economic numbers, and give it a solid scientific or research background there. So, and this is what we discussed in more detail in the last MOOC, and in this MOOC we want to reach out and show how these numbers can be created, but also how they can be um, forwarded to decision makers there on different levels and from different sectors. First, I want to show who, from our point of view, are the most important um, people we are um, we're working for here. That is we look at um, la stopping land degradation. And because we want to um, support the, the community which is most vulnerable for this with our arguments there, we create arguments in the context of smallholder farmers who are often also in a large part um, part of this group you would call the rural poor. They carry the largest burden. It's a vast group and they feed, often not noticed, the largest number of people on earth there. Um, ELD is also engaging larger companies, multinational companies as well, but in the end we must not forget that it is rural people, especially in developing countries, who are bearing the brunt of the um, land degradation processes. Um, 
so besides policymakers, which we just, which I quickly mentioned earlier, um, we're focusing also on the private sector there. This number here, which is up to 3.4 trillion euros there uh, of the global GDP, um, 7.5% of the global GDP, is the annual loss through deforestation and land degradation. This is massive. And... Um, <coughs> We want to show to the private sector that degraded land is, in their language and in their context, an underperforming asset. This is what we must communicate there. And um, we don't want to show too, or we don't want to focus too much on the mistakes which are being made there, but we also want to show that sustainable land management is an opportunity for the private sector. It provides improved yields, it provides new business opportunities, and it's the basis for current operations for many factors, who, uh, for many enterprises who are active in the primary production field. Um, as I said, targeting the poor is what we want to do there. And um, we want to scale up what is already out there. There are a number of very good examples of how land can be managed sustainably and also in the long term to alleviate poverty, to restore land capacity and achieve food security as well. So, And um, if we can provide some economic arguments and background for that, that would ho hopefully speed up the process and scale up the processes as well. So we want a quadruple win, if you want, social, environmental, on the food security and the economic side as well. There. So our vision is seeing Stacy's presentation here. I don't know. Oh, sorry. Let me click through that. Tick, 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 tick. Our vision or the background of ELD is it's a global initiative. This is very nice to see that we are, have participants today here from Japan to the US, from Albania to Nigeria. So we have interest in this, um, in this issue there all over the world. And it's developed and developing countries, it's dry countries, and it's um, countries with usually sufficient rainfall or water available as well. So the issue is a global one, and this is why ELD has to be a global initiative as well. The backbone for our work is an economic study. It will be an economic report and other reports which we'll present in September and some of the stuff which we have have already presented. So economic, sound, robust economic uh, research as the backbone for it. And we show the economic value of productive land to create awareness and to facilitate sustainable land management practices in different regions and on different levels. This should be based um, on a holistic framework which we are developing there. And we are showing that it pays off to adopt sustainable land management practices there, even comparing them to other costs of these practices. Um, <coughs> as I said, we sharpen awareness for the socioeconomic value of land, and the ELD provides in the end solutions and policies and activities to reduce land um, degradation. The last point of this list here is um, maybe a good link to the focus of ELD's work in the next year. Um, we are going from a focus on research towards a focus on reaching out to stakeholders on all levels, decision makers, um, from our network who are part of our uh, network already or from new stakeholders as well. And in that matter, so cool that so many new participants are in this MOOC here. Welcome to the family if you want because um, the ELD network um, consists of a number of political stakeholders, NGOs, different organizations. I'll come to that later again. And our aim is to reach out to these different stakeholders in the course of next year. How do we want to do this? ELD has a 6 plus 1 approach. 
where we first have a look at geographical characteristics, have an analysis of the ecosystem services involved, the importance of the ecosystem services involved um, is, well, the next, is the next step then. From there, we can see land degradation patterns and pressures. And then comes the real economic part in where a cost-benefit analysis is done and decision-making is facilitated. And the plus one is obviously we want to take action. Um, initial start for ELD was the, or the initial request to the ELD initiative was to create um, scientific background for um, work in a sound scientific product as a report. For us, this was not enough. And all, luckily, and also our partners were following this approach. Therefore, um, we were asked to implement and implement our results and to reach out to um, deciders to the private sector and political sector on different levels. Well. As you can see here, these are our target groups. It includes political decision makers, it includes the scientific communities, and it includes the private sector. Um, our core report will be focusing on the scientific communities in the middle, um, but we have spin-offs with which provide specific solutions for political decision makers and show opportunities for the private sectors as well. Yeah. As I said, it's an inclusive partnership. So when I show you a bit later who's all on board here or some of the examples who are on board, you'll find many scientific and economic institutions being there and with their experts um, helping us along there. But we're also engaging NGOs, international businesses, finance institutions, um, I pointed out the importance of reaching out to the agricultural sector or farmers directly, and um, obviously partners from political decision-making processes on different levels, international, national, regional, and reaching down to local level as well, if you want. So here's a list of some of our core partners there. The upper row, the four on top, the Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development of Germany, the European Commission, the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification and Korea Forest Service um, contrive our steering group, if you want. They provide financial support to the ELD um, process and provide political guidance to it. In the next row, you find some key scientific partners. I already mentioned you in New Inway to the left, United Nations University in Toronto, um, the CGIR um, research program on drylands uh, is next there, um, based in uh, um, in Syria. Um, the Secretariat, where I'm sitting here in this beautiful office here, is hosted by GIZ, the German um, Development Corporation. And we have Stacy on board today, um, who is being paid by the Stockholm Environment Institute and um, who provides um, key service to the stakeholder consultations and outreach to different stakeholders as well. You see a number of other stakeholders who are close partners to our process as well. You see a number of no notable um, universities and their international organizations. If you want, these are just the core partners there of our network. There are a lot of more, there's lots more there. If we would put them all up here, it would be, it would bust the screen or it would probably just be too much here to um, present this in a sensible uh, meaning. But um, what ELD does and what we've done in the last years is connect science with political decision makers or private sector decision makers bring them together, use our results to reach out and to hopefully facilitate a better decision-making there. You see here that there's basically two pillars which ELD is being built on. A scientific par partnership to the right. Um, you can see that there's different working groups and scientific networks being involved. They're under a scientific coordination. And you see to the left, 
policy partnerships with diff different supporting partners. There, there's ministries, there's the civil society, there's enterprises from the private sector. Um, we have some individual experts on board as well, obviously. Yeah. Um, headed by a steering group and um, coordinated by the never tiring ELD Secretariat. Um, this has been a very interesting process to follow up and to steer through in the last years. And I think that um, the network we've created and the interest awareness we've managed to create in the last years here shows that A, we're on the right track, and B, that you made a very wise decision in participating in the MOOC this year. Why? Because I think that um, we are seeing a change, at least on the international perception and in a number of national bodies as well, that the issue of land and land degradation is taken more, much more seriously, be it in the context of food security or be it in the context of land rights as well. With the growing world population, more and more decision makers see land as a limited asset. Land is a limited Land is limited, if you want. And um, this is why it's. I think it's getting more and more into the focus. And the international and national level of resistance towards land degradation is getting stronger, I think. Very encouraging and very interesting to see this happening here as well. Our scientific process to what we've been focusing in the last MOOC is focusing around three different working groups, data and methodology, economic valuation of options, and options and pathways to action. This is where Stacy comes in in a bit. And um, on the basis of a number of case studies we have um, done, we have published some uh, publications already, an interim report, business brief, and more. And we'll have more this year. We'll have a core report for the scientific community coming out mid-September. Um, we'll have a report for the private sector and public decision makers coming out in parallel. As you can see, you can find this on our website, and let me quickly advertise www.eld-initiative.org. Um, there is a case study collection there. It's not like ELD is reinventing the wheel. A lot of good work is already out there, but we are providing a platform where this material can all be found. So there is a number of very good uh, case studies being collected there, and we have managed to contribute to, to this list with our own work as well. What we want to do with our publications is obviously create awareness, as I said. So we have, in addition to reports, we've done a few movies, which... Um, uh, with little green people, maybe you, some of you might have seen it already, um, which uh, managed to, which we managed to um, dub in a number of languages as well. Um, interest was good on that. Um, there was an interim report, business brief, as I said, and you see um, the last one on that list here is the initiative's practitioner's guide. That was done on the basis of the last year's MOOC. And um, if you feel that you want to dig more into the material from last year's MOOC, so have a look at the Practitioner's Guide, which is available on our website as well. Um, let me say that um, so f we managed to have ELDs. ELDs outputs are all available for free. Um, it's being funded by a number of government institutions, and since we want to make an impact, all the stuff is out there, so you just... Have a look and you can get it. Um, as I said, we are quite proud of the network which we managed to build so far. And um, the Secretariat here um, is working on engaging with new partners and initiatives as well in that context. We will establish additional regional hubs um, working in East Asia, for example, working in um, specific regions um, in Africa as well, and discussing with 
um, partner organizations in Latin America as well. So we'll be with our ELD material at key conferences, workshops, work on more case studies, more publications, and you'll hear from us from time to time through social media as well. The focus, however, for next year is capacity building, and this is why we are engaging stakeholders, as I said, in Southern Africa, in East Asia, and um, linking up with a number of other initiatives as well. This includes, for example, um, the United Nations um, Convention to Combat Desertifications Initiative, UNCCD's initiative for, of the Soil Leadership Academy. In all these capacity um, development activities, we want to offer solutions. So we try to provide actor-specific policy advice, we demonstrate the value of soil, and we provide reliable data and economic arguments and different levels. In the end, we want to provide, uh, we want to facilitate a fairer, fairer compensation levels and um, well-informed strategies there. I've put a number of economic arguments for better decision-making here. Many of you are probably aware of this already. It's huge numbers which are out there and which show that we must provide arguments to underline the urgency of the issue there. If you see that um, we lose 40 billion annually just because of that, or that sustainable land management could, deli could deliver crops um, of up to 1.4 trillion globally, um, these are numbers which cannot be ignored, especially if you see a growing world population and an increased need for food and uh, commodities in that context. Yeah. We're also bringing this down to the national level. I've put an uh, example from Vietnam here. Um, we could find more in that context. So what are we doing throughout 2015 and beyond 2015? I already said that we will come out with our key deliverables reports um, throughout 2015, culminating in September, end of September. We will continue our research and uh, extend DLD's role as a hub there for case studies and knowledge management. We're working, for example, with organizations like VOCAT. Some of you might know it's the University of Bern in Switzerland who collect sustainable land management um, practices and provide them to users. We'll be working with um, TEEB for agriculture. It's a specific study on, uh, from the TEEB initiative on the agricultural sector. And we'll be working with PBL, the Netherlands um, agency for assessing ecosystem valuation, if you want. We'll do implementation and training, um, work with a very interesting initiative called Common Land, who do large-scale land restoration, and also in GIZ projects. We do trainings. We do a MOOC. We do a MOOC most probably next year as well. And we'll follow up on national activities. The usual way we want to do this is that we raise awareness, we have a little case study there, follow up with training for decision makers and facilitate the inclusion of um, sustainable land management practices of stopping land degradation in policy processes there. We'll be working on a number of fields with business schools as well as with um, capacity building um, institutions there and um, you've seen it already or someone mentioned it already in the communication here it's the international year of soils iyos there um, this year so it's a good opportunity there thank you for mentioning this um, the land degradation issue is part has been um, uh, taken up in the discussion on sustainable development goals, meaning the international community is picking it up as well. And for those of you who are following a biodiversity process, the biodiversity processes more closely, um, there is the IPBAS, the International Panel on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services. I think that's the right name of the for the acronym here. Um, 
they are focusing on land-based ecosystem services and land degradation studies as well. So, there is a lot happening, and I like to show this cartoon in the end here, because it's <laughs> pretty nicely showing that we all understand something different uh, when we say, talk about soil conservation there. But um, I think... This platform here is a very good opportunity, not only under ALD, but between you um, to join forces and to share expertise, as I said earlier, and to share experiences um, with your fellow participants here. Please make use of this platform. Talk to each other. There are participants from all over the world. Uh, talk to our experts. Talk to me. Talk to us. And um, I'm very much looking forward to this interaction with all of you there. So, thanks for your attention. Let me say, enjoy the MOOC. And um, all the feedback you want to give to us, let me hear it. That's really good. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for sharing how the... MOOC fits into a, a big global initiative for uh, reversing or preventing land degradation. So thanks for sharing this with us. This is, I think, a very nice framework uh, for everything we'll be doing in this MOOC because it shows the importance of uh, why what land degradation is uh, challenging us with, but it also shows um, the the number of initiatives that have already started doing something from a very um, variety of perspectives, and um, the MOOC is uh, certainly a very important uh, a part of that. So thank you. Before I introduce the next uh, speaker, um, I would like to welcome all who, um, all of you who joined in the meantime. So welcome. I see there uh, somebody joining from Pakistan, India, other places of the world. But I would also like to welcome um, uh, two or three more uh, people uh, who you will be meeting during this course. The first is uh, Ali Salah from originally from Gaza Strip, but uh, now from um, based in the U.S. Uh, Ali, if you have a webcam, you may switch it on now and you'll be on with your microphone. Ali Salah is the online tutor for this course along with me. Here you go. We see you online, Ali. But the microphone is not working um, or a little slow. I don't hear anything. Um, no, I you can't hear you. There seems to be an issue with the sound connection. Was was nice seeing you online, and uh, next time uh, we make sure that the sound is uh, working, or we try to do that. Uh, in after Stacy's presentation. So this is Ali Salah, based in the US now, uh, who is the online tutor um, along with me. So you be seeing us on the platform, you'll be seeing us uh, looking at your assignments and um, handling all the questions that you will raise um, during the class, we've been working hard uh, to make this MOOC um, happen. And um, I would also like to welcome...
welcome um, Emmanuel Kilaru. Um, you know her from last year's MOOC. Um, Emma, if you ha have a webcam, um, if you switch it on, we would see you now. Um, Emma Noel Kilaru is the one who wrote the script for this um, MOOC. She wrote the one for last year's um, MOOC as well. So if you are the getting to the basic reading for each week, you will find her work um, about stakeholder engagement that she put uh, together uh, for this MOOC. Um, obviously, connection is not working. Okay, no problem. So, um, I would um, like to see is uh, whether there's anybody who would have um, a question that we could take, a question on Mark Schauer's presentation. Um, there comes one in for, from uh, Deepak. Um, is, um, let me read it to you. Um, here's a question whether the ELD community can reach to large number of pharma communities. I think that's for you, Mark. Yeah. Um, we're actually engaging through um, um, a large initiative, um, regional governments in India. So um, our documents will then be, if necessary, translated into Hindi there or so, if you want to bring it down to the ground. Um, our partner institution there is, again, GIZ, and they have experience in communicating um, with local stakeholders, so, so they are aware how this can be brought down to pharma communities there. Actually, um, a good point is that... Um, Creating something like a um, pictorial, you're saying there, could be um, a helpful point there. Um, that was one reason why we did uh, the ELD movies as well. And um, we might develop something like this, not with a specific focus on the Indian culture, but with um, a more generic usability, hopefully, there as well for next year's work. Thanks. Thanks for okay. the question. Okay. There's another question. Does uh, the MOOC or the ELD initiative give short-term internships to students? Okay, I'll come in here as well. Internship, meaning interns at ELD, at um, GIZ. We need to specific, uh, specify this a bit. Um, we do not do this usually for the next like four to eight months or so. Um, uh, four to eight weeks, sorry. Um, we Maybe you can see the MOOC as some kind of internship. Um, <laughs> but um, if you want to further the studies on soil conservation there or economics of soil conservation there or so, we can certainly help in facilitating uh, your look for an, for, um, for an internship. That might be good. Yeah. Okay, there are uh, two more questions. Where we, can we access recordings of the live sessions? I'll take that. The live sessions uh, recordings will be published in the next days uh, and we'll make the link available on the MOOC platform. Uh, we'll publish that in messages and uh, or on the place you, you see the live, you, you had access to this live event. And uh, the presentations will be online as well. Uh, give me some time till tomorrow to upload it um, to the website, but there you can, is an opportunity um, to download them.
Okay, I see two more questions coming up there. Can mm -hmm. I take them, Claudia? Just yes. two more. Okay. So um, there's a question about the soil leadership is functioning there. Um, from my information, the soil leadership, I mean, they have a functioning um, financing behind, backup behind them. Um, it's established within UNCCD, so they'll come up with something um, by October this year. Let me I'll look at the calendar at my wall up there. They'll come up with something um, by October um, concept and activity plan for next year. This is what I hear. Um, experience with policymakers. Do you feel like having oh, feel like having a lot of influence with new concepts and ideas? Um, as I said, I used to be forester. I work at, at desks now, <laughs> uh, pushing a lot of paper to and fro. But um, I've been in policy processes for a couple of years now, and I wouldn't be in ELD here if I wouldn't believe that we can't make a little difference there. Um, it's an issue which is um, slow moving, but as I said, is picking up speed. And um, I think we have a very good window of opportunity in this year, maybe next year as well, to um, change things on the international level, but also on different other levels as well. Yes, yes, answer is definitely yes. Okay, we'll be able to take some questions after Stacy's presentation. And uh, now I'm happy to introduce Stacy Noel to you. She is joining us from Africa today. She's based in Kenya. Stacy Noel is the head of the Stockholm Environment Institute, the Africa Center in Kenya. And she is also the leader of the Options and Pathways group, working group of the ELD initiative. She um, holds a master's uh, degree in uh, development and has been in the area of um, development land degradation for the last 20 years. So please welcome with me, Ms. Stacy Noel. Thank you very much, Claudia, and welcome again Thank to you. all the participants. I'm very glad that you're joining us for this eight-week course. I was part of the previous ELD MOOC, and I really enjoyed the interaction with the students, both during the discussion following each week's presentations, and also using the online message platform. And as the leader of the working group on stakeholder outreach and pathways for action, hearing from all of you about what you're doing, who you're working with, and what are the key issues in your, in your country, it isn't only interesting from a research standpoint, but it also provides the ELD initiative with ideas on how we can engage at the local, national, and regional levels in different parts of the world. So please, please speak up during the discussion session and let me hear about what you're doing and any questions you have about going forward. I'm happy to help with in any way I can with your ideas on your own work on land degradation and on working with stakeholders. So, so to begin, Mark's presentation descri described the ELD initiative in general, so I want to say a bit more about my working group, Options and Pathways for Action. Our main focus is to liaise throughout the ELD process with a variety of stakeholders to make sure that our work has impact. So I put on this slide our, our working group's objective. Basically, we want to make sure that stakeholder input is incorporated at all stages of the initiative to maximize the utility and the uptake of research outcomes. <laughs> Claudia, this is the wrong presentation. Um, Did someone switch presentations? Um, I uploaded the presentation that you... Um, oh, hold on. I think it's this one. It's this one. That's the one I got via Skype. Okay. Is that the one? So on the policy options and pathway working group slide? 
So for this one, how do we go about achieving this? First, we've been working with the other two ELG groups as they develop tools to help decision makers in order to present them to the user groups to see how they fit with their needs. One ELD working group led by Bob Costanza of Australian National University has produced a global estimate on how ecosystem services will change in four different scenarios. And these scenarios are roughly similar to what was used in the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment, for those of you who are familiar with that. Some are focused. Some of the scenarios are focused more on individual benefits and on maximizing production and output in the short term. And some of the other ones are more cooperative scenarios with better land stewardship and longer term vision. So what Bob's group has done so far is to give dollar estimates on a global level broken down by biome types. So quantifying the value of the ecosystem goods and services and how they'll change under the different scenarios. So from this, the decision makers can see how some strategies produce more benefits in the short run, maybe five or ten years. But in the longer term, because the asset base is being drawn down, the flow of benefits gets lower and lower over a 20 to 40 year time frame. And while I think that global analysis is really interesting, especially to scientists and to globally focused organizations like UNCCD, our group wanted Bob to downscale the work to the national level because we think that the policy, policymakers will really demand to see something more specific to their own context so they can base their decisions on that. So that's exactly what Bob's group is doing for us now in five or six countries. And once he finishes those, our working group will go back to these countries and share them and get feedback on that particular tool. The other group... Stacy, if, if I may interrupt for a second. I think during, uh, due to the uh, internet connections uh, slow, it would be helpful to the slower internet connections. It, uh, it would be helpful if you spoke a little slower because sometimes it's all okay. obviously cutting off um, the, the tone. So a little bit slower so uh, that it works with the connections. Okay. I, I apologize for that. It's usually not a problem here, but it's the rainy season. And yeah, please too much speak. Echo. I had, oh, I that's hope fine. you aren't hearing too much of an echo. Can you hear? No, no, that is fine. Just a little bit slower. Okay. These will come in and join me, and then you will hear not just screaming, but probably someone running out of the door. So to go on about my this current slide, I just talked about um, Bob Costanza. The other group is led by Pushpam Kumar of UNEP, and he's produced an economic analysis on the cost of soil erosion and the benefit of taking action in sub-Saharan Africa. So his group has done this at the national level for 42 countries. <clears throat> so we already have the level we need to get feedback from governments. And Pushpam himself has already begun presenting his work. He presented at the African Minister's Council on Environment in Cairo early this year, and he was also at the Global Soil Week in Berlin, as were a lot of ELD colleagues. And for both of these, our working group joined to get the reaction to his work from the stakeholders. And we will also go back, go back to the sub-Saharan stakeholders we're in touch with to present his country-level findings and get the feedback from that. So a little more about, sorry, so a little more on getting stakeholders involved, why and which ones. I think the first question is pretty straightforward. For everyone, we want to make sure that the research is relevant for decision makers and that tools and methodologies developed are fit for the needs of the users. So that means we need to engage with stakeholders right from the start to, <clears throat> to start to ensure uptake and action based on our key messages. We also need to make sure we aren't just talking to government stakeholders, as Mark mentioned earlier. We have to involve the other groups making land decision uses. So this this includes the private sector, from multinational corporations all the way down to the smallholder farmer. And it's also in such, in such essential to include civil society, women's groups, cooperatives for farmers, and academia, local universities working on land issues. So on this slide, I just want to list some of the ways we have met with different groups of stakeholders. In most countries, we begin with one-on-one -on -one meetings with key government people in various ministries, NGOs, and research institutes working on land, and whenever possible, a local university. In some countries, we already had a ready made entry point.
I'm not sure whether Stacy's sound is working properly. I don't hear her anymore. For okay. Tanzania. So we have them for Tanzania and for Kenya. So we also presented at a number of different international events, which were useful in meeting a range of stakeholder groups from different regions and finding out who ELD might partner with at the country level. One of the, one of the most useful of these, in my opinion, that our group attended was held in Bonn with the World Business Council on Sustainable Development. It was a great chance to hear the concerns and interests of large-scale private sector actors with a dozen or so different companies brought together in one meeting. This was a really efficient way, in, in my opinion, of getting input from a group that can be hard to engage. So these are a couple of mechanisms for meetings, for meeting stakeholders and having discussions. But the type of engagement I I'm, I'm think is most interesting to this group and the one that I want to talk about the most is multi-stakeholder meetings. And we held these during national consultations. And I want to talk about how they worked and what came from them. So I will use two case study countries for this. That'll be Kenya and the Philippines. So for Kenya, we started out at the subnational level. And then, as I said in a minute ago, in the sub-Saharan African countries, we had a really big advantage in that we teamed up with the local UNDP country offices and were able to employ a local consultant to help identify the main land degradation issues in the country and map out the relevant stakeholders in advance. So we decided to have the local consultation first, and we chose Narak County, where land degradation is a big problem. The meeting that we held included the county commissioner and included the local environmental agency official. We had farmers there. We had um, representatives from women's groups and also someone from an NGO, so all the major stakeholder groups that we wanted to engage. And the discussion was quite frank, with some complaints of land degradation being driven by people actually outside the county who were leasing land, and they were using it for a few years with no concern for soil fertility or for long-term productivity, and then ending the lease. So in that case, we found that there was a group of stakeholders actually missing from our meeting, but who had an important impact on what was happening in terms of land degradation. And there was also a point made, which was a bit more uncomfortable, that some of the de degradation, especially in terms of deforestation from charcoal making, was actually coming from within the county. And at this point, one of the women's groups reps stood up to say that without secure livelihood options, there was something, they were going to sometimes resort to these sort of environmentally unsustainable activities to make ends meet, that they basically had no choice, they had to pay school fees. They had hospital bills. They had to put food on the table. So I thought it was really interesting for the entire group to hear these ladies explain that there's actually a logical and rational reason sometimes to create land degradation. So the discussion was really interesting. It gave us a window into how local governments function in a devolved structure, which is useful in thinking about how to engage further as the ELD initiative outputs are completed. Overall, the main outcomes, beyond the lack of livelihood options and the problem of land leasing by outsiders, there was also quite a bit of conflict between land users. But having all these different types of land users in the room gave a much better picture of the various drivers. If maybe not so much on the way forward, it was a very useful start, I thought. So we had quite a bit of interesting points coming out of the consultation and a lot of things to take forward to the national meeting. So the national meeting was held in Nairobi, and we had more than 25 people participating, including staff from Kenya's Ministry of Environment, Water, and Natural Resources. We also had staff from the Ministry for Ag, Livestock, and Fisheries. And again, someone from the National Environment Management Authority. I mentioned a minute ago we had the local rep at the, at the NARA consultations. We had people there from the University of Nairobi, and we had a number of Kenyan NGOs and community-based organizations, as well as international colleagues. We were joined by ICRAFT, ILRI, and IUCN, to name a few. The private sector was also represented. We had um, a colleague from Syngenta, the local office in Nairobi. Again, with such a diverse group, the discussion was extremely interesting, with lots of different angles on the problem, and a lot of discussion about the different roles for each stakeholder group. I think we identified a number of roadblocks such as insufficient information to base decisions on. Um, they talked about insufficient policy commitment as well. The group was also really interested to hear the results of the NARAC meeting, which I found really kind of heartening. They were very interested about the local level issues. And we had a sense that they didn't always get as much information from the local level as they did from, from the uh, regional and the national level. 
And in the end, there were quite a few questions raised about how the ELD tool being de developed by Bob Costanza's group, because Bob presented by Skype, and he was able to respond to these questions. So we had good feed feedback with the group at the initial stages of Bob's, um, Bob's development. So, and I also think some really good connections were made across different stakeholder groups, and everyone ended up with a stronger idea of different perspectives. So I wanted to introduce the Kenya example of how a multi-stakeholder forum can work. While it does take time, it seems to me it's one of the most effective ways to discuss the issue of land degradation, and even more importantly, to think about the best way to move forward. So we also did some local consultations in, or sorry, we also did some consultations in the Philippines, but it, we didn't have a local level consultation in that case. And we also didn't have the resources for that country to bring in a national consultant to do the mapping paper, as I said we did for the others in, in Africa. But we, were, we did benefit from having the fact that uh, one of our working group members was from the Philippines, and she served as our entry point, and she helped us organize a multi-stakeholder meeting in Manila, which was hosted by the Office of the Presidential Advisor of Environment. So we got in quite high in that sense in, in working with policymakers. We also had one person there who was speaking for the private sector, and we had representatives from local and international NGOs. And as with Kenya, the meeting started with discussions of various drivers of land degradation, with everybody contributing about how they think different groups are, are dealing with it. Because the group was smaller and most attendees knew each other well, I would say that there was probably less conflict in the room and more agreement on the root problems. Um, the private sector person did get a lot of questions and general comments about the building boom in the Philippines and how it was contributing to the land problems. And afterwards, the, after the discussion, uh, myself and Lindsay Stringer, who was also there, we explained how the ELD worked and expected outcomes, and we got some really useful input in terms of shaping our research. So this consultation was really different from the um, Kenya experience, and it felt to me more like a first step. I think it was a shame that we didn't have the ability to do local consultations, because I think that would have been quite interesting. So... That concludes my presentation. Basically, there are a lot of different ways to engage stakeholders. The first step is to think about who you need to reach out to and then think of a possible entry point that will work for you. If you have a, a strong in-country partner or a good network through your project, maybe, you might have a very easy way to launch your engagement. If not, you could undertake your own mapping study to figure out the key organizations that you want to connect with in terms of governmental, local, and international NGOs. You also need to decide what type and scale of private sector you want to include. Depending on your time and your budget, if necessary, you can start with one-on-one -on -one meetings with individuals and move forward from there. Uh, we found ourselves that teaming up with the university has been quite useful in many countries, as our staff often have really good engagement with government counterparts. And lastly, when I, th I think when you're developing your engagement strategy, you need to be very clear not only what you want from the stakeholders in terms of input, but you also really need to have something that you're providing to them in return. So for us at ELD, we were discussing the ELD tools that could be useful to their work and talking to them about how they could be shaped to be more effective. And in the places where we did local consultations, which also included Sudan and Tanzania, as well as Kenya, we found that the national government officials were really keen to hear what their constituents in um, rural areas were thinking and talking about. So these are politicians, so they want to hear what, what, what everybody's interested in. So I guess my point is it should be a two-way street, a collaboration between partners working, hopefully, towards similar goals. I also want to add that as this move goes on, you'll get additional information to inform your engagement strategies. Um, I know there's one coming up on multi-criteria analysis next week, and there's other tools that will be presented. Uh, the third week, there's a session on the rationale of engaging stakeholders. And that same week, my group will present some more in-depth on our consultations, focusing more on the outcomes of the uh, consultations. So I just want to say I'm really excited to be part of the ELD MOOC again. I plan to log on to most of the sessions, everyone that I'm available for, and I hope all of you will too. I put my email address on the last slide, so please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. And as we go to discussion, I really look forward to hearing about what you're doing, who you're working with, and if you see a possible role for ELD outputs in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you for sharing this insight into why stakeholder engagement is important. And thank you for sharing a couple of examples from different countries, from uh, different levels uh, about uh, stakeholder engagement.
Um, we are now, we have now time to take some questions and there already is one and the one is whether there are stakeholder consultations in India. So you may want to take that question, Stacey. Uh, we haven't done any in India, but I'm very keen to see that we do in Asia, that we do India and China if we can get the budget because I think it's really important to talk to both of those two countries. But we're also sort of in the first phase of our consultations, and we did start a bit smaller. We started with some of the smaller countries, and we, we looked for places where we already had an entree. For example, I saw that there was a participant from Chile, and we're working very closely with Cesar Morales. He's a working group member. He's based in Santiago with Cepal. Okay, I see that the uh, reply did not get across. There is no stakeholder consultation so far in India because the working group started doing uh, consultations in smaller countries, but Stacy would love to do uh, something in uh, India or China. So, uh, thank you, Stacy. Uh, we'll be glad to see you in week three with a presentation along with Tomark uh, Falk. Um, and um, there's another question uh, about teaming up with university persons in Africa and the question is whether this is uh, also be also feasible in Asia. Stacy, you may want to take that question and then... Okay, go ahead, please. As I said during my presentation, it's been our experience that when we work with the university, we sort of get a, a quick entree into, the, into what's going on. They're usually quite... Um, quite in touch with the government people. They work with civil society. They attend many of the same conferences. So I think working with the university in, in any region, Africa, Asia, Latin America, I think it is a very useful way to um, leverage your involvement with the stakeholders. Okay. Okay. Uh, I can take audio questions now. So if you do not want to raise your question in the chat box, uh, please raise your hand. You do that by clicking on that hand sign in the upper left corner. If you want to talk, uh, I'll give you the um, audio. Please make sure that your audio is working and we should be able to hear Levaka now. Mr. Levaka, please switch on your microphone. Um, uh, uh, welcome please, to this uh, MAC, MOOC 2015. Uh, please. Um, I didn't get the question, Mr. Levaka. Um, okay, there is... Uh, okay, I... The audio is not working. Okay, um, there's another. Um, and so now the microphone is to Mr. Akvitang. Please switch on your microphone by clicking on that red microphone in the upper left corner then we'll be able to hear you. And um, here we go. Please. Hello. Hello, we are hearing. Please. Oh, obviously, connection. The network, the network. 
the network is probably not um, strong enough. Um, you may want to put your questions or comment into the chat. or in the forum for uh, of the platform in the forum for uh, of the platform okay if we can't get it working now i would if like to conclude working now no there's an issue with echo. Okay, I would like to conclude this session and uh, say thank you to our speakers, Mark Schauer and Stacey Noel. Um, thank you for joining us and sharing insights into the ELD initiative and stakeholder engagement activities. I would like to thank all the participants who joined us today. Um, we now have the opportunity, if you do have a webcam, I will switch it on and we can say hello to each other. Um, how does it go? So here comes the... fun part but uh, let me see it should be on hold on uh, now you may want to switch your webcam on. Now comes the fun part. I see Ali, I see Victoria, Petunia, Christine, Doc Fick, Nicola Favretti, who will join us next week. Hello. <laughs> That's always the part I like best about uh, the MOOC. So, Kanes, I see you. There's dark fig from the Philippines. Who else have we got? Ah, great to see you. So thank you for joining us. Um, and thank you for sharing some insights today. Glad for all the questions you raised. I see it's a big community working uh, from different ends of the world to on the same issue of land degradation. So see you next week again in the live event. We'll be happy to have you again and meanwhile we see you online on the MOOC platform uh, you will we will bring out the presentations and the recordings there so you'll be able to find them later this week Okay, so thanks everybody and bye-bye. See you. Have a nice day. Have a nice night. See you next week. Oh, there's Jennifer, there's Aquatang, Kiali, I see. Hello. <laughs> there's Salim Mulalam. Hello from joining us from Pakistan today. Hello. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have a good evening, good night, good day, good morning. 
and looking forward to seeing you next week again. Okay, bye bye. Bye, Nicola Favretto. We see you next week probably mm. as a speaker. Okay, bye bye. Will Mr. Peter Vagak? Hello, bye bye. Hello, goodbye. Olga, hello, goodbye. <laughs> There's Marco Antonio. Yes, I know I got your question on the platform. So glad to see you. It's Kudrat from India, I believe. Hello, Irina, hello. See you next week. It's great. I love this. I love this. Uh, if somebody had told me there's Isabella, well, hello. <laughs> if somebody had told me this 25 years ago, I wouldn't have believed it, that we can now connect via the Internet from all around the world in a seminar, discuss important issues. So, great technology. So, good to see you all. I will have to leave now. See you next week. Bye-bye. It was nice seeing you. Yes, that's... <laughs> and there's Ju Vigand. Hello. And, okay, bye-bye. Bye. I have to go um, and...